Why has fighting moved to the other side of the border? How are Minnesota and Ukraine now linked? And what's the final word on Ukraine's Olympic run? This is week 128 of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. I'm Anna Belliker, reporting to you from Kyiv, and I'll be taking you through the top three stories from Ukraine this week. The war took a turn that few of us saw coming this week when Ukraine launched an incursion into Russia's Kursk Oblast, reportedly advancing dozens of kilometers within the border and engaging in combat on Russian soil. Kursk lies on the border with Ukraine's Sumy Oblast, which Russia has attacked daily since the start of the full-scale invasion. Russia is reportedly evacuating civilians from the frontline areas of Kursk Oblast. Vladimir Putin has called the incursion a large-scale provocation, while Kyiv still hasn't officially confirmed that the maneuver is even happening. However, President Volodymyr Zelensky said in his evening address on Thursday that Russia should feel what it has done, which is a pretty direct reference to fighting moving onto Russian soil. Commander-in-Chief Alexander Sersky also hinted at the operation by posting a photo of himself in a forested area and saying that he was in a staging area, a military term for an area where troops and equipment are assembled before an operational assignment. One of Zelensky's advisors also said, without confirming that the Kursk attack was happening, that if there was fighting on Russian soil, it would only serve to benefit Ukraine in potential peace talks, not least because the psychological toll on the civilian population will put pressure on the Kremlin of a sort that they really haven't felt before. Like Zelensky said, Russia really hasn't felt what it's done to Ukraine every day for years, and likely it won't react well to getting a taste of its own medicine. However, it's important to point out that this incursion is taking place at a tense time in the war. Human resources are being stretched thin as Russia continues to assault Ukrainian positions in the east and the south, and it's not clear exactly what the cost of this incursion will be, or what the desired long-term result is. Is it a PR move? Is it a crazy mission to capture the Kursk nuclear power plant 60 kilometers inside the border? Is Ukraine looking to dig in and occupy the area long term? It's still unclear as of now, but all eyes are now watching a part of the front line that wasn't even on our radar a week ago. U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris and Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz have officially been named as the Democratic nominees in the upcoming U.S. presidential election. Waltz was named Harris's running mate on Tuesday, and they attended their first campaign event together that same day, making it official that they'll be facing off against Republican nominees Donald Trump and J.D. Vance. Waltz has been governor of Minnesota since 2019. He's considered a strong ally when it comes to advocating for Ukraine's interests, and he can speak on military conflicts as both a politician and a veteran. He has consistently condemned Russia's invasion and supported enforcing sanctions as consequences. And he's also met and established ties with various Ukrainian leaders and diplomats. Waltz is also governor of a state that has both a large Ukrainian refugee population and a large weapons manufacturing industry, meaning that advocating for Ukraine is in his best interests on many levels. So, all in all, a Harris-Waltz victory is looking like an increasingly better option for Ukraine. The 2024 Olympics are concluding in Paris, with Ukraine having won a handful of medals and facing relatively few controversies. Ukraine took gold in women's team fencing, women's high jump, and men's middleweight boxing, with silver and bronze medals in gymnastics, shooting, martial arts, Greco-Roman wrestling, and other events. Notable among the winning athletes is fencer Olga Harlan, now Ukraine's most decorated Olympian. Harlan is internationally recognized for her decision not to shake hands with a Russian opponent at the 2023 World Championships, leading to her disqualification. Such incidents really haven't been as visible at the Games as people anticipated. For the most part, the 15 Russian athletes competing under a so-called neutral flag were kept out of the spotlight and the commentary, with no big public confrontations. One Ukrainian canoeist, however, claimed that she was forced to paint over an inscription on her boat that read, I am Ukrainian. Although it's not entirely clear whether this is true or what exactly about the message was deemed too political. So, in the end, these Olympics have had some bright moments, but similarly to the last couple years of the Eurovision Song Competition, it employs a curated neutrality that eliminates any opportunity for controversy, and thus any opportunity to take a meaningful stand. 
That's all for this week. We'll be back next Sunday with more news from Ukraine. Your support is what makes our work possible. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to this channel. If you'd like to become a member of the Kiev Independent Community, please visit the link in the description below. I'll see you next week.